I should be on. Praise God. You know, uh, when I when I slip back and go to the restroom, I always try to turn this mic off because I don't want to give you guys an additional concert. Can I get a witness? <laughs> All right. If you're ready for the word, shall bring it on. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. Some of y'all are laughing at me, but the truth is the truth. Who's ready to learn tonight? Oh, I didn't hear from you. I said, who's ready to learn tonight? Remember, this is our year of supernatural expansion. I'd like for you, if you're able to, to stand for the reading of God's Word. I know that may be foreign to you, but the reason that I do that is because I place such a high honor on the Word of the Lord. He said He would lift His Word above His name. I feel like in America, so often we stand for what doesn't matter. Let's stand for what matters. Hallelujah. So anyway, I'm preaching on, on uh, this year of, of supernatural expansion. Anybody claiming expansion and growth and increase in your life this year? And, and I believe God's given me a download. I'm going to be sharing it with you over the next few Wednesdays. And I believe our crowds are going to swell. So you're going to want to get here early and be a part of prayer at 6 o'clock during this time of fasting and seeking the Lord. But I have a tremendous download tonight. I want you to look at, at 1 Chronicles 12, 32. The Bible says here, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. And to the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Today, I want to stand before you and not just give you my opinion or, or not just stand before you and try to preach an impressive message. I want to stand before you like a, a man of Issachar. I want to stand before you with an understanding of the times that we're living in so that I could hear the voice of the Lord and, and speak truth into your life for direction for this year. Who wants to hear from heaven? I come on now. Who came not to hear from a man? But you came to hear from heaven. And you want the Lord to give us understanding of the times. I believe this is why it's so necessary for us to walk out this year of expansion because Folks, Jesus is coming back, and whatever we're going to do, we need to do it quickly. Hallelujah. So I want you to slip up your hands because we're going we're gonna to learn tonight. I believe I'm going to stand tonight as just God's voice into your life. So, Father, I, I praise you that you have a plan tonight, and I believe you've given me understanding of these times that we're living in. And I stand here tonight as your proclaimer. And I pray, God, that you will cause your word to go forth in power. In Jesus' name, we bless you and we love you. Somebody give the Lord the greatest ovation of the night. Come on. And tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm here to grow. I'm here to grow. Tonight, I want to be like the men of Issachar, and, 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 and some of you may be wondering here in this place and tuning in by live stream, why do we need prophetic insight as it relates to the future? And, and here's why. Having prophetic insight into our future gives us passion and desire and momentum. Somebody say momentum. It gives us momentum uh, to bring it into our present. See, see, I want the things that God has promised in my life for 2017, I want it to manifest in my life. I don't want it just to be something I hear about. I want to get every prophetic word has a price tag attached to it. In other words, you're going to have to do something to see it come to pass. How many of you want to do whatever it takes to see the prophetic word of the Lord manifest in your life? Make a little noise if that's you in the room. We need to align ourselves with the Word, the plans, the promises of God for the year 2017. And I want to unpack this revelation that God has given me over the next few Wednesday nights so you don't want to miss it. 
And if we're to truly walk in this year of expansion, we need to understand the times. Now, we're going to take a little time and, and understand where we are on the timeline of heaven. Now, we all live according to the Gregorian calendar, but God operates still on the Hebrew calendar. On the Gregorian calendar, it is the year 2017. But on the Hebrew calendar, God's calendar, it's the year 5777. And I don't know about you, but I want to get in God's timing. I want to find out where God is in his timing. And it's the year 5777. God has not changed. And in his his teaching and in, and in his direction, it's that year for his people, not just the Jews, but also for us. And I believe there's much revelation that, that we can garner and gather from this time of the year. See, God moves intentionally. He speaks intentionally. And let me tell you something, precious. He speaks in, in many ways. God uses seasons. God uses cycles. God uses patterns. Hang with me now. He uses numbers through the entirety of the Old and New Testament. He's a God of order. He's a God of patterns. He's a God of numbers. He's a God of seasons. King Solomon wrote that there's a purpose for every season under heaven, and, and, and we understand that. Our God uses even numbers, Hebraic numbers, and, and I'm going to be unpacking that over the next few weeks, but Hebraic numbers and letters are actually hieroglyphic in nature. What does that mean? That means they're actually pictorial. They look like something. And I believe as we really discover this, well, God will speak to us about this year. How many of you are ready for God to speak to you about this year? Hallelujah. You know, it's so powerful when you look at the numbers 1 to 10, even the Hebrew numbers 1 to 10. The number 1 in the Hebrew, it looks like an ox, but the number 10 looks like a cross. It resembles a cross. It tells us that even in the Old Testament, everything started with oxes, with the sacrifice of oxes and lambs. But if you look at the number 1, you'll see the number 1 in the Hebrew, especially in the Old Hebrew, it looks exactly like an ox head. But in the, in the number 10, you see the cross. And I'm telling you, it may have started with an ox and with the sacrifice of oxes, but it ended with the cross of Jesus Christ that said it is finished. So no longer are we counting on oxes or lambs or goats, but we rest in number 10 and we say it is finished. Jesus paid the way with the cross, but all these are hieroglyphics. They're, they're pictures. Now, now, my Lord, God is trying to tell us something, and I want to talk to you tonight about where we are. This is the year 5777. I'm going to talk to you about, about first the number seven because isn't it amazing that we're in 2017, but it's also the year 5777. And I've got so much revelation that it's going to, I'm just going to have to really pace myself tonight. But I want you to receive, if you're ready, somebody shout, I'm ready. Now, remember, numbers are powerful and they mean something. This is not a magic formula. This is not me trying to manipulate you in any kind of way because you have to claim this by the Holy Spirit. You have to say, Lord, I'm claiming this by your word. I'm going to do your word. I'm going to operate in your word, and I'm going to claim this by your word because if we try to manipulate God, that's actually satanic and witchcraft. Come on, somebody. You can't live like the devil and then try to claim a word from heaven preach, Pastor Riley, but that's a whole nother message. Uh, this revelation is for you to place your faith around over the next few weeks. I want you to rally your faith around seeing these things manifest in your life. Now, the number seven is a very powerful number in the Bible. There are actually 860 references to the number seven in God's Word, including the fact that you know the most familiar one, that God rested on the seventh day. But then there are seven men in the 
Old Testament who were referred to as men of God from Moses all the way to Elijah with five different men in between. They were called men of God seven times. You see men referred to as men of God. What does that mean to you? It means this to me, that we're going to claim in faith that in the year 5777 or 2017, you're going to be a man or a woman of God. You are going to walk as the power in the power and authority of a man and woman of God. You're not going to be pushed around by the enemy. You're not going to be controlled by fear. You're going to rise up as a man and woman of God. You say, well, pastor, what does it mean to be a man or woman of God? To be a man or woman of God means that you personally belong to God. You represent God and you are filled with God's authority. So how does does that sound? In 2017, I'm going to be a man of God. In 2017, I'm going to be a woman of God. I'm going to personally belong to God. I'm going to represent him everywhere I go, and I'm going to be filled with his authority. Is there anybody who wants to be a man and a woman of God in 2017? Let me tell you something. We think just the preacher is a man of God. We think just Pastor Don is a woman of God. But let me tell you, you in 2017 are going to be a man and a woman of God. You're going to make demons tremble in the name of Jesus when you pray. You're going to see prayers answered. You're going to see miracles manifest. So before I even get into the lesson tonight, I want you to take your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, take my hand. Come on. If you're sitting by your wife, grab her hand. If you're sitting by your husband, grab his hand and just say, neighbor, take my hand. Squeeze it real tight because I want you to know what a man or woman, what a man of God feels like. Come on. I want you to know what a woman of God feels like. Oh, tell him I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I have power in the name of Jesus. I represent him. I'm filled with his authority. Glory to God. I belong to God. Somebody say, I belong to God. I don't belong to the culture. I belong to God. I don't belong to a denomination. I belong to God. Let me really mess you up. I don't belong to a political party. I belong to God. I don't belong to an agenda. I Belong to God. Give him praise if that's you. We're his representative. We, we flow in his power. We operate in his authority. Now, now, hear me. The Bible is also divided up into seven parts. There's the law, the prophets, the writings of Psalms, the gospel of Acts. There's the general epistles. There's the epistles of Paul. There's the book of Revelation, and I'm going to talk more about the number seven later, but this is powerful, folks. God's trying to tell us something. In this year of 5777, even this points us to the Word. And in this year of 5777 or 2017, you're going to be full of the Word of the Lord, and it's going to manifest in your life. Come on. All seven parts of the Bible are going to manifest in your life. Everything the Bible says about you, hallelujah, every promise is yours. Everything the Bible said you can do, you're going to do it in Jesus' name. Everything the Bible said you can have, you can have it in Jesus' name. Every bit of power it says you've got, you've got it in the name of Jesus. How many of you want to get the Word working in your life in 2017? team. Praise the Lord. In this year, 5777, you're going to be full of the Word, and the Lord's going to manifest that Word in your life. There are seven uh, uh, great holy days, beginning with Passover and all the way to the last great day in the Bible. Jesus performed seven miracles uh, on the Sabbath in the Bible. In the book of Revelation, there are seven churches, seven angels, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, and seven last plagues. 
six. Tell your neighbor there's a lot of sevens. Come on. Yeah, there's a lot of sevens, but I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to teach you something tonight that sevens mean something in the Bible. Let me just cover this really quickly. Seven is the number represented completion in the Bible. Remember, the Lord created the earth in six days, but on the Sabbath he rested because the work was completed. God created and rested on the Sabbath. He created on the first six, but he rested on the Sabbath acknowledging completion. And I believe that this is the year when you're going to complete some stuff. This is the year you're going to finish some things in your life. There's some things you've been dealing with in 2010. You couldn't get it done in 2011. You couldn't get it completed in 2013. You couldn't get it completed in 2015. Even in 2016, you tried, but you couldn't get it done. But when you get to the end of 2017, you're going to find out the thing that God said you were going to do, this is going to be a year when you will say, it is finished. Hallelujah. There are battles that you're going to get through fighting. There are addictions that are going to be finally broken off of your life once and for all. There are things that you have prayed about that you've been fighting for, but you won't have to pray about it anymore after this year because your prayer is going to turn into praise. Hallelujah. I said your prayer is going to turn into praise because by the end of the year, it's going to be completed. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. How many of you are claiming 2017 will be a year of completion? Hallelujah, you'll get to the end of the year and things you've been fighting for, you'll find out the fight is finished and you will walk in completeness. Somebody say complete. Complete, complete means nothing lacking. And in 2017, 57, 77, we walk into this year with nothing lacking. I believe every bit of strength you need, God's going to give it to you. Every bit of anointing you need, God is going to give it to you. Every bit of resource you need, God is going to give it to you. Every bit of faith you need, God is going to give it to you. Every bit of joy you need, God is going to give it to you. Every drop of power you need, God is going to give it to you. Every healing you need, God is going to give it to you. Every dollar you need, God is going to give it to you. Every peace of mind you need, God is going to give it to you. We are going to walk in in complete manifestation in the name of Jesus of what we need. Glory be to God. Nothing lacking. I said nothing lacking. Some of y'all can't handle that. If you can't claim it, I will. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here that will claim in 2017, I will walk with nothing lacking, everything I need, God will provide it. Come on, has he provided up until this point? Has he been faithful up until this point? I think you better get ready because I believe in 2017 there is a divine escalation of the provision of God in our lives. Glory to God. I'm claiming that for myself. I'm about to get excited. I'm trying to teach, but I'm preaching. Teaching is telling it and preaching is yelling it. Come on. So, so seven is the number that represents completion, but watch this, precious. Seven is also the number that represents rest. So, so in 2017, 57, 77, you need to get done with laboring. Can I say that again? Just get done with the laboring. Have you ever felt like everything is hard? It's like I have to fight harder than he does. I have, why is what is so hard for me so easy for her? It's not fair. It's not fair. What you have to do is stop comparing your walk with someone else because you don't know the hell they're fighting with a smile on their face. But here's the deal. In 2017, in 5777, here's my word to you. Get done with laboring in your own strength. Who's ready for a year of rest in God? I'm going to ask you again. I said, who's ready for a year of rest in God? 
Now, now you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. I thought you said that this was a year of expansion, growth, and increase. But here's what the Lord said. In 2017, 5777, in this year of expansion, growth, and increase, it will come. But I declare that it's coming without personal stress. I declare that it's coming without personal anxiety. I declare that it's coming without worry. I declare that you're not going to lay awake at night and worry about it. You're not going to be, you're not going to get up. And some people eat when they're worried. Some people don't eat when they're worried. I eat when I'm worried and when I'm not worried. Come on, somebody. But you are not going to stress in the name of the Lord this year. Come on. I said you are not going to stress in the name of the Lord this year. You're going to enter into a season of restful productivity. You're going to enter into a season where the jobs are going to open up for you, where the opportunities are going to come, where there's going to be things that you've been fighting and anxiety-driven, and you've been upset and uptight. But you're going to find out that in 2017 that the Lord is going to give you rest. Hallelujah to God. How many of you are ready for rest in 2017? Raise up your hands and declare this. Say, I'm too saved. Shout it out. Say, I'm too saved to be swayed. Say, I'm too anointed to be disappointed. And in 2017, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. Who's declaring that I'm not going to be full of stress in 2017? Oh, glory to God. Did you hear that, Dawn? You're going to like me a lot this year. Hallelujah. Now, this year, what does that mean? That means even if we face challenges, we are not going to stress out in Jesus' name. That even if we stress, even if we have difficult times, we're not going to be full of stress in Jesus' name. We're going to remember what the Lord has done. We're going to claim his promises for this present season. And we're going to go through whatever we go through. We're going to go through it with joy and peace. Now, watch this. The number seven also denotes the end of one thing and a new beginning of another. Oh, Jesus. I got about three people that are there with me. It represents the end of one thing. And the new beginning of another. Six days of creation. Sabbath day rest. Getting ready for the new thing. I wonder if there's anybody in the room ready for a new thing to manifest in your life. There's some new things, some new opportunities, some new doors, so some new seasons that are going to manifest in your life. Hear me in this room. This year, let it go. Let go of the past. Let go of who disappointed you. Let go of who upset you. Let go of being mad. Let go of the anger. Let go of the, let go of the mess. Hallelujah. Let go of the trouble. Let go of the hard feelings. Let go of the unforgiveness. I'm not going to flow in that. Hallelujah. Give yourself another chance give the people around you another chance and say I'm not you know it's kind of like you say well pastor I'll forgive but I won't forget I'm gonna bury the hatchet yeah, the problem is most people that bury the hatchet they leave the handle sticking out and so when you get mad you just go grab it right out of the ground and then you hit them in the head with it again you can be talking about where to go to lunch and then all of a sudden, it turns into a fuss, and you say, well, you never want to go where I want to go to lunch. I'm telling you, I remember what you did all the way back in 1997. Listen, this year, bury it in the name of Jesus. Put 2016 behind you and say, I'm starting new and fresh. I dare somebody who's ready to close the door on some drama in your life and start 2017 fresh. Give God a shout. Stop trying to resurrect stuff that God's trying to kill. Stop trying to bring back to life things that are over and done. Let 2016 go. Let those years go. Enough of the old. It's time for the new. I wonder if there's anybody in the room with me who can say in the name of Jesus, there's some battles that I fought last year. I'm not fighting them this year. There are some things I carried with me last year. I'm not carrying them into this year. I'm walking into a new season. Make a little noise if you're ready to walk into a new season. 
in 2017, don't waste your time crying over what's not, missing what's now, and sabotaging what's next. Oh, my God. That's tweetable right there. That, that's a Facebook update right there. In 2017, don't waste your time crying over what's not, missing what's now, and sabotaging what's next. Declare this in Jesus' name that I'm going to let this season go and I'm going to walk in a brand new season. I'm going to, I'm going to walk and experience, walk in and experience everything new God has for my life. If you're ready for a new season, new mercy, new joy, new peace, new direction, new breakthrough, make a little noise in the room right now. Hallelujah. You know, I need to go ahead and finish teaching, but you kind of clap like you half believed it. I'm going to ask you one more time. If you're ready to have a time of rest, restful productivity, if you're ready to get done with the drama, if you're ready to step out in faith, and you're ready to receive a new thing, I want you to make a little noise like you believe God can actually do it in your life. <laughs> Glory to God. I preach better when you're noisy. Hallelujah. Now, remember, this is the year 5777. You actually were listening. Praise the Lord. Now, now let's start with it's the, it's, the, it's the millennial of the 5,000s. So, it's 5,000, the century, 700, the decade, 70, and the year, Seven, But if you really look at 5,700, 5,700 literally means in the Hebrew, may it be the year of. So we're going to start just with the 5,700. May it be the year of. I believe God is trying to tell us something. That you got to get in faith and say, may it be the year of. May it be the year of power. May it be the year of joy. May it be the year of peace. May it be the year of reconciliation. Come on now. May it be the year of revival in America. May it be the year when our sons and daughters come to the Lord. May it be the year when our campuses, Bethune-Cookman University, Daytona State College, may it be the year that all of our campuses, Emory-Riddle and Mainland and Seabreeze, may it be the year that Campbell Middle School and all in Holly Hill, man, may it be the year where we see God get a hold of kids and young people and turn their lives around. May it be the year that my family gets saved. May it be the year that, that my children serve the Lord. May it be the year that I walk in healing. Amen, somebody. Now, now, now remember, just real quickly, the number five is, is the number. Hey, I'm not going to show you a pictorial of that, but a five, actually in the Hebrew, it looks like a man with his arms up in the air like that. I taught you this a few years ago, and it's the number hey. Hey, hey, it literally looks like a hey. So, so it, it starts with a hey, and it looks like a man raising his hands and saying, hey, with praise in his mouth. So instead of you uh, being so bound up by what the enemy wants to do to you this year, when the devil tries to come in and mess you up, just raise your hands and say, hey. When they tell you your, 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 your son just went crazy, just say, hey. When you feel like things aren't going right, just get a praise in your mouth. Hallelujah. Just get a hey. Tell your neighbor, hey. But, but listen, five, five represents the number of grace in the Bible. Now, Israel was delivered from Egypt and came out of bondage in ranks of five. If you studied the Bible, you'll find out that all through the Bible, 
Five is a representation. I could give you so many examples, but for sake of time, five is a representation of grace. And, and, and see, as Israel came out of bondage, they came out in ranks of five. And here's what we're going to claim this year. This year, you're going you're gonna to walk unbound and unhindered into God's promises for your life. You're not going to be bound up. You're going to walk in, in God's best because of grace. So I want you just to say this after me. Say, I will. I will. You want to slip up your hands, you can't. Say, I will, I will. walk unbound and unhindered into God's promises for my life in 2017. I'm going to walk right into God's promises. I'm not going to be bound up by my past. I'm not going to be bound up by unforgiveness. I'm not going to be bound up by sin and addiction. Come on, somebody. How many of you are ready to walk unbound and unhindered into every promise that God has for you in Jesus' name? Now, remember, five represents the number of grace. David actually picked up five smooth stones to deal with Goliath. And, and this, is the, this is the millennium of the five. Now, now hear me. The, the, in this year, here's what I'm declaring. that This year, giants are going to fall in Jesus' name. In this, we're in a season of grace, and I declare this year giants fall in Jesus' name. Giant financial problems, giant issues that you've been dealing with, giant situations that have manifested in your life. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to get it because you deserve it. We're in a dispensation of grace right now. We're in a season of grace right now. Glory be to God in the name of the Lord. You, you, you are going to, to walk in the power of God unbound and unhindered out of bondage, but every giant that comes against you, you're going to rise up like David did, and giants are going to fall. Now, now I could, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it, and then I'm going to move on and teach from, from the Hebrew 7. But listen, the holy anointing oil was comprised of five parts. Isaiah 10, 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing this year. I'm claiming a fresh and new anointing. How about you? Praise the Lord. Now, we know that we are in the year right now, 77. We're in the year Ayan Zayan. That's the Hebrew. Ayan Zayan, 77, 57, 77. And I want to talk to you now just for a moment about the decade of the 70 and then the year of the 7. Now, watch this. I want to show you a good picture. I wanted to put this on the screen, but I decided I could even do better if I could just point at it with my finger. We're looking at, at this right here. This is actually the number 77. This, this here on the top, this is the number 7 or, or, or 70. This is the number A. In. And then on the bottom is the number Zayn. Now, 70. Seven. Now watch this. The A-N numbers, if you just look from here up, this is the A-N, just from here up. Can you see that? And you see right here, these actually look like eyes. These right here actually, can you see how they look like eyes? That looks like an eye, and that looks like an eye, a physical eye. And A-N is the number of seeing. It's the number of clarity. It's the number of being able to see what you need to see. I declare that this is a season of clarity for you. I declare that in 2017, you're going to see what you need to see. I declare that in 2017, you're going to know who's for you and you're going to know who's against you because you're going to have clarity in the name of the Lord. You're going to know what business deal to get involved in. You're going to know what job to take. You're going to know what woman is yours. You're going to know what man is yours. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You're going to know what relationship is yours. God is going to give you clarity. This is the year to see what you need to see. This is the 
the year for you to walk in divine clarity. This is the time for you to look again. This is the time you've been looking at some things and they didn't work in times gone by. But there is a new anointing on you in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, look again. There are things that you didn't see before, but now you're in a season of clarity and you're going to see what you need to see. How many of you want supernatural vision this year? Give God a praise if you're going to claim supernatural vision. Oh, come on, somebody. I said, are you going to claim supernatural vision? You'll see what you need to see concerning your children. You'll see what you need to see concerning your marriage. Somebody raise your hands and say, God, I, I claim clear vision. Give God a shout right now. Give him a praise right now. You'll not only see it, you'll know how to respond to it. You'll have clarity. Here, here's what, here's what I'm, I'm declaring in faith. Some of you have been in a time where you feel like things have been a little foggy, where you haven't had clarity. Ooh, glory to God. But God said you need to step in to this time of clarity, that you're going to see what you need to see. Now, in Jesus' name, we will see the promises of God manifest in our lives. We're going to see it. But see, this, this, this is the, it's the number Ayan, but on the bottom here is the number Zayan. Now, Zayan, and I'm going to really, I'm going to teach the fire out of this next week. Next week is the service that the enemy wishes you would stay home because when you start using your sword, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. So watch this. This on the bottom here, this actually looks like a sword. Do you see it? Up here is the eyes. Down here is the sword. So this is the year of the sword of the Lord. Ugh. This is the year. Glory be to God of the sword of the Lord. This is the year where we are going to pull out the word of God in our lives and use our sword in the name of the Lord. Yeah. But understand this. When you look at this right here, this actually, the, the A in is on top. Are you tracking with me? I know it can seem a little intense. But the A in is on top and the Zayan is on the bottom. And what has happened here is that the, 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 the Ayan is actually crowning the Zayan. So what the, this year is called the year of the ruling sword. This is the year where God's word is going to have authority in your life. Now let me flip it over. How many of you already see the sword here? Do you see the sword? If you, if you see the sword, make a little noise right now. If you see the sword right here at the bottom. But this is actually... What a Zayan looks like now in more he modern Hebrew language, it looks exactly like a sword down here, but it's topped with a crown. A Zayan is actually called a crowned letter. So hear me, this pick is powerful. Next week we're going to talk about the sword, but I want to take just about 10 minutes and talk about the crown. Now we know the ultimate crown wearer is who? Jesus Christ. But I want to check out real quick some revelation as it relates this year to the crown. And, and I want to discover what the crown symbolizes. Now, crowns were first worn. Do you see the crown there? Let me hear from you if you see the crown. All right, this is the crowning sword. It's having a, not just having a sword, but having a sword with a crown. Mm. A crown represents authority. I'm not just going to wield my sword of the word like somebody without authority. But when I pull out my sword, I'm going to have the authority behind me to see the sword accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. Now, watch this. Watch this. Are you ready? Uh, crowns were first worn by the high priest. And you were not allowed to wear a crown unless you were consecrated to do so. The priest was a worshiper. He was consecrated to be a worshiper. He wore a crown when he did his ministry in the holy, when he did his ministry before the Lord in the holy place. And I want to tell you something. In 2017, in 5777, power 
authority, expansion, and breakthrough will manifest as you begin to manifest worship to the Lord. This priest wore this crown, but he was a worshiper. His job was a worshiper. In those days, they didn't have a king, but this priest was the king of worship. I got a word for you. Become the king of worship before you seek to be the king anywhere else. Become the king that knows how to give God glory and give God praise. God said, I want to empower people. God said, I want to anoint people. God said, I want to fill people with victory and glory. I want to direct people. But I got to find some people who will first put on the crown of worship. Are there any worshipers in the house in Jesus' name? Decide now. See, see, worshipers are set aside. Worshipers are different than everybody else. Worshipers are not like everybody else. Worshipers are consecrated. When you are consecrated, you are set aside. And this year, you're going to worship your way into your miracles. That priest, he would worship his way into the Holy of Holies. In the Holy of Holies, there were miracles, signs, and wonders, and breakthroughs behind the veil. I could teach that for another the hour, outer court, inner court, holy of holies, whole outer court, everything was done in natural light. Inner court, everything was done in candlelight. Everything that the priest did in the outer court, he did it because there was sunlight. It was easy to work. But then he would go into the inner court and then there was candlelight. And though it represented being promoted, still that priest had his foot out in that natural world because he needed somebody to bring him bread for the table and oil for the lamp to keep the candles burning. But then there was another dimension called the holy of holies. Behind the veil, there was no explanation for the light, the glory, the power, and the presence of God. Let me tell you about this year. This year, you will worship your way into the miraculous. This year, you will worship your way into the realm of no explanation. If you want to go into the realm of miracles, you won't program your way in. You won't legislate your way in. You won't dictate your way in. You won't command your way in, but you will shabak your way in. You will worship your way in. You will glorify your way in. Somebody, if you're going to become a king of worship or a queen of worship, give God some praise right now and let him know. Okay. Now, here it is. Crowns were worn by kings and represented an exalted position of authority. Remember, if you're going to wail the sword, if you're going to be effective with the sword, you need the crown of authority. And in 2017, we will rise to walk in the authority of the Word of God. Whatever the Word of God says, you need to claim the Word because you have the right to claim the Word of the Lord. His Word is going to be powerful in your life. Hear me in this room. Don't allow seasons or situations or satanic attacks to rob you of your authority. Remember what Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I want you to walk in authority this year. I want to hear from you if you're ready to walk in authority this year. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, what does that mean? That means I have authority. I'm a kingly priest. But watch this. Crowns, if you study, represent honor in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Crowns represent a covering of the glory of God. What does that mean? That means I'm not just going to come to church and experience the presence of God, but I'm going to be covered with the glory of the Lord everywhere I go. The glory of the Lord is the kabod of God. It's the presence of God. That means everywhere I go, the presence of the Lord is going with me. That means no matter what the enemy tries to rise up and bring against me, the greater one is in me and the crown of glory is over me. Now, check this out. Crowns represent honor in the Old and New Testament, and crowns represent a covering of glory, as I said. But crown in the New Testament is the Greek word stephanos. And it symbolized a mark of royalty and rank. This year, young man, I want you to know who you are. This year, young lady, I want you to understand who you are. Check it out now. 
Stephanus was also used when describing the crown given to victors in Roman competitions. So crowns are for conquerors and for victors. So this year is the year for conquerors and victors. Help me, Holy Spirit. This year is a year for conquerors and victors to rise up. A victor would receive a prize when they would have Roman competitions, Roman races. They would give that winner a crown to acknowledge that he won the race. Whenever someone was reigning in those days, they wore a ring, they wore a crown because they would conquer their enemy and they would wear a crown in the presence of their enemy to let the enemy know, now I reign over you. You reigned over me, but now I reign over you. Let me tell you something, in the name of Jesus, God is releasing victorious crowns in the next season. And how many of you are ready to walk in the victory that God has for you? to walk in. But not only that, God is releasing a conqueror's crown. So is there anybody in the name of the Lord that can say, Pastor, I'm claiming in 2017, I will wear the crown of a conqueror. Now, behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. That no one take your crown. Tell your neighbor, nobody's taking my crown in 2017. Nobody's taking my crown in 2017. I'm going to remind myself I'm destined for victory. I'm going to remind myself that I'm destined to conquer any weapon the enemy brings against me. This year, there is a covenant with God. This year, there is a covenant. There is a crown covenant with God. Stand up, everybody. Get ready. This year, there is a crown covenant with God. I'm going to say that again because I want you to get it in your spirit. We're in, the, we're in the crown year and we're in the year of the sword. The year of the crown and the year of the sword. The crown gives me authority. The crown gives me power. The crown symbolizes victory. But next week we're going to learn about the sword and what we're able to accomplish with the sword. But check this out. This crown, it's, a, it's an anointing for the crown to, to rise up in the power and authority of the Lord. Now listen, this year there is a covenant with God. So tell your neighbor, get ready. Here's what the Lord says. Are you ready for what the Lord says? Come on, I've, I've, I've been preaching and prophesying. I said, are you ready for what the Lord says? I'm going to ask you one more time because when you hear this, I don't know what you're going to do because this is going to get real. I said, are you ready for the word of the Lord? Here's what the Lord said. The Lord said, get ready in 2017, 57, 77, because this is what crowns represent. Get ready for seasons of honor. Get ready for increase. Get ready for promotion. Get ready for supernatural favor. Get ready for supernatural protection. Get ready for supernatural breakthrough. And get ready for supernatural blessing. How many of you are ready to put on the crown that God has for you? Somebody raise your hand. The power of death and life is in the power of the tongue. And say in Jesus' name. Shout in Jesus' name. I'm ready, Lord, for this new season. 5777, 2017. I'm ready for seasons of honor, increase, promotion, supernatural favor, supernatural protection, supernatural breakthrough, and supernatural blessing. Now praise God like it's yours. Oh, come on. You reign in the name of Jesus because he reigns. And you need to claim what he's done for you. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost if you know how. If not, just worship. Father, 
5777. I know I've said a lot tonight, but remember five is the number of grace. So we receive it by grace. It starts with the millennium of grace. And then we see the number Ayan. We see the eyes in the old Hebrew. So this year, you're going to see what you need to see. Mm. Supernatural direction. The right yeses and the right noes. Come on. Right decisions in business. Right decisions with your family. You're going to see the things you need to see concerning your daughter. Who am I talking to? She's concerning your son. This is seven now. Remember, this is seven. In the name of Jesus, this is a season of rest, restful productivity. This is a season of completion. You say, Pastor, what are you doing? I'm trying to stir your faith up to just claim this promise in the name of the Lord. Well, what if you hadn't heard God? What if I have? Well, what if nothing changes? What if everything changes? What if this is your word? This is a time for new beginnings, Pastor Troy. I said, this is a time for new beginnings. I said, this is a time for new beginnings. Come on, I said, this is a time for new beginnings. My Lord, I got to let y'all go. I, th listen, I've been here 20 years as pastor. Pastor Troy and I have been here 20 years, and Dawn's been with us too. Praise the Lord. We've been here 20 years, but guess what? 20th year, I'm starting over again. New beginnings. Hallelujah. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. How many of you are claiming new beginnings? Come on, this is the year for you to be a worshiper. You're going to worship like never before. You're crowned with worship. How many of you are going to worship this year? You're going to press into God and in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You're going to walk in kingly authority. Glory be to God. You're, you're going to wear the crown of a victor and the crown of a conqueror. Next week, we're going to go a little bit further. But how many of you tracked with me tonight and you're glad you came? Who's going to come back next week and learn more? All right. Pastor John, step out and let's just slip up our hands and let's put on the crown of worship right now. Come on.
Jesus, I declare that this revelation comes alive in you, that you realize that this is your year to rise up and claim the authority of one who wears a crown of victory, a crown of worship, and a crown of conquering power, that this year you walk in the rest of the Lord, the completion of the Lord. And God does new things in your life this year. I bless you in the name of Jesus, and I say the Lord himself bless you. I challenge you to fast and pray with us. I challenge you to be back Sunday. This Sunday, I'm going to preach a message called Stepping In to My Double Door Season. You don't want to miss it. Somebody give the Lord a praise. I love you so much. God bless you. You can sing as Pastor John worships with us. Thanks for coming tonight.